to. So let's look at this fundamental theorem of calculus. Suppose that f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b if g of x is equal to the integral from a to x of f of t dt then g prime of x should equal f of x which is right where we started at with now an x located in there. But what's going to happen with that f of a? That, well, let's see, that would have to be, if that's going to cancel and we take the derivative, that means that that's going to become, oh, that's a constant, yes! All right, so if we put a constant value in to our value for our function of g of x, so g of a, if you will, that gives us a constant. Then when we take the derivative of a constant, that becomes a zero. So yeah, we do come right back to f of x. Okay, so now if we integrate our function f of x dx, which is f of b minus f of a, where f is the antiderivative of f, that is f prime is equal to f, then, yeah, we should be taking the derivative again, hopefully, of a constant here with our x. Yep, I think that will work, too. Okay, so we noted that part 1 can be written as the derivative with respect to x of our integral from a to x, f of t dt, where f of x, which says that f is integrated and then the result is differentiated. We arrive back to the original function, and again, we're going to have that constant that we take the derivative that gets us a 0. And in part 2, since f prime of x is equal to f of x, then when we rewrite this as, well, f prime in there, we integrate that to be capital F, we just have to integrate it from b to a. All right, let's look at some examples here. So again, as I said, these are going to undo each other, just as if, like, the cube root of x will undo the x cubed. Okay? All right. So let's evaluate the derivative of the integral from 0 to x, 3t dt. So if we think the inside first, we're going to add 1. That's going to be squared, divided by 2. So that's 3t squared over 2. We put in our x. That's the upper bound. That's 3x squared over 2. Then we put in minus 0 for the t squared. So 0 squared, well, that whole thing 0. And that cancels out. So the derivative of 3x squared over 2, we bring down the 2, subtract the 1, the 2's cancel. Yep, we come right back to 3x. Over here, let's integrate this one first. We've got to find f prime of x. So we distribute the t. So this will be add 1, 4 divided by 4. So t to the 4th over 4 plus t squared over 2. Then we're going to evaluate it from x. So that changes these to x's. And then we put 0 in, that's going to 0 out. So minus 0. So x to the 4th over 4 plus x squared over 2. Take the derivative of these two terms. And it goes to 4. The other. Yep, 4 is canceled. That's going to give us 3x plus x. And we factor out the x. We come right back to x times x squared plus 1. Yeah, so that's what it is right there. We just put in the x's. So it's convenient when you see it's got these zeros here. That works out perfectly. All right? Because when we're subtracting a 0. All right, C and D. Now let's take the derivative of, F. ooh, we're not starting at 0 here. Oh, but wait a minute. Remember, that's going to go in as a constant into your new function, which gives us a constant value. We turn around and take the derivative. It's going to be 0. So I'm going to make my guess that because the, the fundamental theorem, part 1 of calculus right here, this is going to be secant squared of x. Okay? So like I said, if we integrated this, you'd put in the x, it would be, I believe, tangent of x. You put in tangent pi over 4, that's a 1, but then you take the derivative of 1, that's going to be 0. You take the derivative of tangent x, you come to secant squared x. So we're right back to where we started. So FTC1, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 1. So if I had to make a guess here, I'm thinking t squared plus 1 inside here, we just replace the x, x squared plus 1 on the inside, that's again your fundamental theorem calculus part 1. If you're taking the derivative on the outside, integrate the inside, that's part 1. If we switch around, that's part 2. Find the derivative of, F cap of capital F of x equals the integral from pi over 2 to x, whoa, hell the phone. That's not x, that's x cubed. Ooh. All right, slow down here. Let's integrate this. Cosine of t 
t is sine of t. Then we got to go from x cubed to pi over, no, down to pi over 2. So let's substitute that in. Sine of x cubed minus sine of pi. That's still going to be a constant value. Sine of pi over 2, that's 1. Then we take the derivative of 1. That's 0. But wait a minute. Here, we're going to have to do the chain rule, I think. The derivative of sine is cosine of x cubed. But then we got to take the derivative of the inside and multiply this by 3x squared. So we're going to have to slow down when our upper bound is something other than an x to the first power, because now we're going to have to do it some kind of chain rule. Now, another approach to doing this is you can use your what we call u substitution. Let u equal the x to the third power. Then du would equal 3x squared times dx. You take the derivative of the u. That's du. Take the derivative of x cubed. That's 3x squared dx. And you divide that over. And that's your definition of the chain rule. So now you say, I'm going to integrate from pi over 2 to u, cosine t. Fundamental theorem of calculus says, well, that's just cosine of u. But then you're going to have to multiply that by du over dx. So this is the definition of our chain rule. And then that'd be cosine of x to the third, then times your 3x squared. Either technique works. They're both good. Example 5. Oh, here we go. Oh, we've got negative x as the lower bound, positive x as the upper bound. T to the... Whoops, come back here, darn mouse. All right, so I think what I'm going to do here, when we integrate this, let's cut this in half. The reason I say that is because I think t to the third power is an odd function because it's an odd power which means it's going to be symmetrical about the origin so t to the third would be in quadrant one and quadrant three would be the other half down below and i think i think these two areas just might cancel each other out so let's check this out so let's integrate from negative x up to zero of t cubed dt plus then 0 up to x t cubed. All right, so if we substitute, well, I kind of, what I want to do here, it's a little trick because I don't like the upper bound being zero. I like the lower bound because remember when you evaluate, for example, this one, it's going to be minus 0 at the end. So I would like this first integral to do the same thing. So if I switch these boundaries, I just have to put a negative here. That way it'll be a minus zero at the very end. Okay, so if we integrate this, this will be t to the fourth over four. All right. But if, since we're trying to find f prime, capital F prime of x, this is going to be our answer right here because we're going to come right back to that because we're going to take the derivative of it. So this would give me negative x to the third, but then with the minus, and then, oh, there's that chain rule again. We're going to take the derivative. That's going to be a negative 1, and then x to the third, the derivative of x is 1, so this is negative, uh-huh, negative x to the third plus x to the third, just what I thought. They're going to cancel each other out to a 0. So if you don't see this, we can talk about it. Um, on the board. All right, let's find f prime, capital F prime of x if capital F of x is equal to, oh, wait a minute, here we go. We got x to a strange power up here again. Okay, so let's break this into negative x to 0, 0 to x squared, just like we did up here. Um, I'm going to switch this around again. The reason I'm going to do that, because cosine of 0 is... Ooh, that's a 1, isn't it? Well, let's switch it anyhow. So negative integral 0 to negative x, cosine t of 1 over t squared. Okay, now, 
fundamental theorem, we can just plug in the negative x's, but we got to take its derivative. We'll plug in the x squared, take its derivative of the inside chain rule here. So that's going to be cosine of negative x and 1 minus negative x going in for the squared, but the derivative of negative x is negative 1. That's where this is coming from. Oh, I see, I see. So negative times a negative, that will cancel out. So that's why we wanted to switch that. Good, 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 good. And then the second one here, that's going to be cosine of x squared over 1 minus x squared squared. But then the derivative of your x squared is 2x. That's your chain rule. And once we clean up the signs, cosine of x over 1 minus x squared plus 2x times cosine of x squared over 1 minus x to the fourth. And that's our final answer. Example 6, find capital F prime of x of f of x equals, okay, there's that x squared up there again. So again, we're going to have to do a chain rule here. So I'm thinking that this is going to be sine of x squared squared. Take the derivative of x squared chain rule, makes that 2x. I think we're done because we put in a 0. That's just going to be minus 0. That's out. So that's going to be because 2 times 0 is done. So I'm thinking that's it. There's our answer. We just make, clean this up to be x to the fourth inside of our sine x. So 2x times. Now be careful here. It's not sine to the fourth power of x. It's x to the fourth on the inside of the sine function. All right, example seven. Let g of x equal f, or not f, the integral from zero to x of f of t dt, where f is a function whose graph is shown. Okay, so this is f and we're integrating it. So we're gonna treat this graph f like g prime. This is g prime right here because we're integrating g prime to get back to g of x. They want us to estimate g of 0, g of 2, g of 4, g of 6, g of 8. Okay, so g of 0. Oh, wait a minute. That's like saying f of 0. Here's your x to 0. Well, that's one of our properties. You integrate from 0 to 0, that's 0. That's done. Okay, let's now put 2 in for x. Now we're going to integrate from 0 to 2 of f of t. So we go to 2 on the x-axis, go up, we'll shade this all in, and it looks like we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, maybe 7, just slightly less than 7. We'll just say it's approximately 7. Okay, g of 4, from 0 to 4. Okay, well, now that's adding on this part right here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2 halves, because that's a straight line, is 8. And then partial, well, that's approximately 9. You count the squares. It's like this original almost 7, then add 2 more to it, so it's almost 9. G of 6, so now we're integrating from 0 to 6 of f of t. So we're approximately all of 9, but now we have this area below the x-axis with a base of 2, height of 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. So we need to subtract 1 off of this. So this should be approximately 8. And then G of 8... Well, that's your 8, then 1, 2, that's 3 right there. So subtracting 3 from the 8 is 5, so g of 8 is 5. If you wanted to, you could also go back here, it's 9. So you got a big old triangle again, 2 by 4, so 4 times 2 is 8, divided by 2 because it's a triangle is 4, 9 minus 4 is 5. Still gets you to the same spot. All right, let's see. B, find the largest open interval on which G is increasing. Okay, now remember, F is the same as G prime. All right, so here I have positive Y coordinates for my G prime. So that means I'm increasing B from 0 to 4. 
And now I have negative y coordinates, so I'm decreasing from 4 to 8. C, identify any extrema of G. Okay, that means local min or max. So at 4, I cross the x-axis, so that's my critical number. And I'm going from increasing to decreasing, so that's going to be a local max or a relative max at x equals 4. And what's the y-coordinate of the g function? Well, we go back over here. g of 4 was approximately 9. So that's the point where our relative max is going to be at. D, sketch a rough graph of g. Okay, well, I've got g of 0, g of 2, g of 4, g of 6, g of 8. So let me erase this out of here. Shoop, gone. Let me add some more lines. So g of 0 was at 0, plot a point right there. g of 2 is at 7, so 4, 5, 6, here's 7. g of 6 was at 8, so here's 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plot a point. Oh, yeah, 4. I was counting at 5. My, I apologize, 4 to 8 right there. Then we're looking at, um, or excuse me, 4, 9. I was looking at 6, 8, right about here. And then 8, 5, right there. And we draw our curve, and that's what our g function is roughly going to look like. I mean, we only have five points, so that's the best we can do. And that's the end of this section.